Welcome back. So we got another batch of slabs and slightly larger items. So I figured I'd just bunch them into this one video. And really, there's nothing that's too expensive. There's one card that was a little bit. Not many of you are going to go after. Um, everything else was pretty, you know, 30 bucks and under. Um, so nothing completely outrageous price-wise for most people these are obtainable items <clears throat> so we're going to start with the cheapest card of this or cheapest item of this whole pile of purchases and that is the 1979 TCMA Hank Greenberg Renata Galasso this is a PSA 9 off center. I think this was $2 plus shipping because it's a 1979. But I like the image on it. It was really cheap. So how could I pass up adding it to the collection for, you know, just a few dollars? I thought it was a good idea to just add it as a modern card. Next up, we have 1938 Knockout Razor, Max Bear. This is a GAI graded card, which I know it's GAI, so you can't really put much stock into the grade. Part of the Hughes tobacco find, supposedly. Um, but a really nice Max Bear. Mentions the fight with Jim Braddock and Joe Lewis. So, interesting card which I'm going to put aside. And you'll know the reasons why later. So this is the one that was a little bit more money. Um, again, not a card that many of you be going after. That's 1922 Nelson, uh, yeah, Nielsen's Chocolate Type 1 Sammy Bone. Um, and a SGC3. Obviously, the centering isn't the best on it. But a very nice looking card. Kind of minimal wear. Great picture. And it's still, from my perspective, and where I collect within the hobby, um, it is still surprising that um, a very solid Jewish player was on the Cincinnati Reds, who was notoriously anti-Semitic um, for a great number of years, including the 1920s. So... Happy to add this, and this will go into the small Sammy Bone collection I have. There's only a few cards, and some of the other ones that I don't have are crazy money. So I don't expect to get those anytime soon. And this was a very, very inexpensive, um, I think $15, if not $10, um, 1936 National Chickle Buddy Meyer. He's with the Washington Senators, middle infielder, this is an SGC3, great little player um, for the Nationals, and this is another one of the situations where I could go buy this premium raw, and I'd probably spend more money than what I won this at auction, and I think there's... For those of you that collect vintage, especially pre-war, there is an incredibly underdeveloped portion of the vintage market. One that hasn't seen the boom of all the, that all the cards have. And that is with the National Chickle, the Gaudi, all of the premiums that were made, particularly during the 1930s. Um, 
those prices are still, comparatively speaking, tremendously low. So if you want a nice vintage card of a particular player, a particular team, in my opinion, that's where to go because I'm seeing cards and or I'm seeing premiums that should go for a lot more. I'm not saying they go for card prices, but given the current market, they should go for a lot more than the, what they're going for now, which is pretty comparable to prices several months ago. And as you know, a lot of the card prices are nowhere near where they were several months ago. So if anybody's interested in kind of delving into uh, vintage, um, and if the particular player or team that you want is normally quite expensive in card form, I would start looking honestly at the premiums, um, either larger slabs such as this, Maybe you'll get lucky. You can get one for 15, 20 bucks. It costs me more to slab this um, than how much it actually cost at auction. Um, or buy some of the raw cards. Um, they're less likely to be faked uh, on the mid and lower tier players. Mid can still be stars and Hall of Famers mid and lower tier players are much less likely to be faked than the cards are going to be. So that's my little diatribe on um, for those of you that want to look, start looking at vintage cards. All right, so now I've gone over all the slabs. So let me back up a little bit. We'll do a little redneck zoom out. So we can kind of explore some of these photos. That should be good enough. So we move this out of the way. Now this is an image that I'm sure many of you know, um, regardless of your particular belief system. Um, this is the Western Wall, the Kotel in Jerusalem or Yerushalayim. 1970s image, 60s, 70s image. I like these type 1 newspaper photos. Um, and really it's just a, kind of capturing that moment in time. And for me, pictures such as this, specifically of the, Kot the Kotel, you know, all these people lining up against the wall. If you've never been there, it is practiced to write your message to God, to your prayer, on a piece of paper and stick it into the cracks of the wall. There's countless people doing that in this picture. And for me, the kind of, and looking at the minutia of what's going on, it really kind of lets my mind wonder of kind of what people are asking for at this time. What are the, the prayers that are being um, spoken, that are being written, you know, as this image was taken? And it's these kind of nuances that I really enjoy with a lot of photos that aren't particularly of famous people or players, um, but just scenes. Um, and ones that I, in I particular, can relate to. Um, Places I've been, such as this, <clears throat> and situations I've been in, such as this. So that's why I like to pick up these photos here and there. All right, so now we have two more photos to go over. And I specifically put this Max Bear card off to the side. So, starting off. Try and put that somewhere it's not going to fall. We have Max Bear and Buddy Bear, his younger brother, training. Max Bear is training for his fight against Joe Lewis in this particular photo. Now, if you look at this 1938 card, at the bottom it says, He has since been knocked out 
by the present world heavyweight champion, Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis. This is the fight that he was preparing for. Just kind of rather interesting to have that information on the card. A famous fight, a famous fighter. Um, and it's kind of all going to be for naught. Um, so really interesting having these type 1 photos. And there is information written on the back that specify what he's training for. So, the next one is even more fascinating. So, many of you may be familiar with this particular scene. With this image. Even though you may not have seen this photo before, you'll know the scene. If you watch Cinderella Man, uh, Joe Gould, Jim Braddock's agent, played by Paul Giamatti in the movie, pushed and pushed and pushed to have to give Braddock a chance to fight then world heavyweight champion Max Bear. Finally, Boxing Commission relented and said he's going to get killed. But we'll give him a shot. This is the photo taken with Jim Braddock signing the paperwork to fight Max Bear. So Joe Gould is over here. Jim Braddock is here. So this, without this particular image, without Braddock signing that contract, the myth of Cinderella Man wouldn't be what it is today. And it was this man that they were looking to fight. Now, I will get into the whole Cinderella Man movie in a later video. It might take a little while. Still working on a few things. But we'll delve into some of the inaccuracies of that movie. But, for the historic purpose of it, this is basically the start. This is what made that particular fight a reality. So, I thought it was a really cool image. Um, really don't see these types of things before where you can... I love the, the things where the images, that it is a moment that people may, may not realize but it is a turning point in the sport of boxing um and it, well not a turning point but a almost mythical story you know one can look at braddock and see rocky having being a derivative of that uh, legendary story within the boxing world so there's a whole bunch of different lines that you can draw all down to this particular moment. So, I'll leave this one up. Well, Braddock, Bear. Again, large premiums. I recommend um, kind of going and get and looking into buying those um, since that market has yet to catch up. Um, and then again, we have a couple more images. But we'll put, leave them off the side for now. So that's what I got for you this time around. And until next time, please remember to collect what you enjoy. Enjoy what you collect. And don't let anybody, especially the market or YouTuber, dictate that to you. And most importantly, have fun. Have fun by being active in this community. So find your way of participating. Whether it's making videos, watching and commenting, going to live streams, group chats, going to your LCS or local card show, or simply talking about the hobby with family and friends. The more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. The more you'll learn, the more your PC will grow, the more people you'll meet, and the more fantastic friendships you'll form. So I thank you very much for joining me. Hope to see you again. Have a good one. And bye for now.